Hello. Welcome everyone to the IPFS weekly call. My name is Portia and at the IPFS weekly call, this is where we get to show, showcase and see all the wonderful applications being built on top of IPFS. So thank you for being here. And today we are going to speak to Joel. Um, he's an engineer at, hey Joel. <laughs> He's an engineer at Threebox, and Threebox uh, works on social profiles for Web3 applications, for peer-to-peer -peer applications. And uh, the thing about Joel is we're actually in the same building. <laughs> so Joel and I are part of the same co-working space, which is full node. So we are in walking distance of each other. So fun fact. Um, on that note, Joel, are you ready to take it away? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So, thanks for the opportunity to speak here. Um, I've been following the IPFS project for, I guess, since back in uh, 2015. So, excited to share what um, me and my team has been working on. Um, so, let's see if I can share my screen. Great. Thanks. You all see this? Yes. So is it in full screen now? Yes. Perfect. All right. So, um, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Joel, or often known as OED on the web. Um, today, I'm going to be talking to you about Threebox and um, what it is, why we've been building it, and kind of how it uses IPFS and other technologies. So I'm going to dive right into it. Uh, so basically, what is Threebox? Uh, we see Threebox as like a user data network. And uh, we're building tools to enable people to build more social dApps. Uh, so we want to enable users to have control of their data. Um, we also want to enable data to be more accessible in a way where uh, like the network effect kind of works around users rather than um, applications. Um, we want to make it easier to uh, build applications where users can interact uh, in both in a public and a private way. Um, and we want data to be stored uh, securely and in a way where you store it privately, so uh, with encryption. Um, and we want to make it interoperable with um, identity standards that are emerging in this kind of decentralized web space. So if anyone is familiar, DAD is short for decentralized identifiers, which um, is uh, a standard developed by the uh, Decentralized Identity Foundation. So why are we building Freebox? So the way it got started was that we were working um, in the Ethereum space. And we kind of saw that a lot of Ethereum dApps were kind of boring. Basically, you had a smart contract. Then you had a front end that might, maybe was hosted on IPFS. And you could only do like very simple thing, like click on a button, and then that triggers some smart contract function. But you can't really do rich applications like that because smart contracts are expensive and slow. Uh, so we kind of started getting this uh, kind of notion of blockchains and Ethereum and stuff like that are the financial layer of the distributed web. And we kind of wanted to uh, do something more than just financial applications on the distributed web. And yeah, uh, applications, uh, other applications that were more kind of user rich were often taken uh, web two applications. So CryptoKitties, for example, they register users on their servers. Uh, so our approach to this was kind of to build a social layer uh, for the distributed web. So letting users have profiles instead of just hex addresses, uh, making it easier to use and like making the onboarding experience better. Um, letting the users control their privacy and their identity instead of just storing it on a server like traditional apps do um, and make 
uh, like the experience of using decentralized applications more social. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna talk about some components of that makes up the three box network. Um, so basically there, there's three major things. Uh, the first one is three box JS. And this is um, a JavaScript library that you use to build web applications. Uh, and basically, um, you use it to store data and retrieve data and interact in the system. Uh, and uh, this library takes care of storing and encrypting the data and in a way where it's like easy to make uh, applications. Then we have the three box pinning node and this nodes uh, basically uh, you can spin up and they will replicate the data in the three box network. So each user kind of have their own data store uh, and that's stored locally within the browser, but it's also replicated on any nodes in the network that are run separately. So this node runs uh, <laughs> with Node.js. Um, oh yeah, I didn't go through all the bullets. So uh, read, write data for uh, three JS, uh, verify and create claims. And that's something that has to do with uh, decentralized identifiers, encrypt, decrypt data, um, and create threads. And I'm gonna dive in deeper into that later. And the pinning node communicates with uh, any clients that uh, three, three box JS replicates data and provides a REST API for like the latest state of um, users' profiles and uh, data storage. And this also has a module so it can communicate with S3 if you want to have like a more robust backend. Um, then the third component that's um, still rather important is the three box profiles app. So basically a DAP that uses three box JS where you can go and create a profile. So like I said, a picture, a name, you can verify Twitter and GitHub and so forth and start building can have some social reputation. We can also see public activity um, that you made. So like things you've updated in your profile, but also if you tie this profile to an Ethereum address, you can see all of the, this, uh, this user's public uh, Ethereum activity. Uh, so the JS library has a bunch of features. Um, there's like three major ones. The first one is a profile where you can basically set and update the pro profile of a user. Uh, then there's a feature called spaces, and this is the um, access control part of the data storage where um, applications can request to get access to the space and users have to explicitly grant permission to access that space, uh, which means that you might have uh, DAP one that has um, access to a space, but DAP two doesn't have access to that space and the user doesn't want to give that access to that space uh, to that DAP. So like you can have some compartmentalization of data. Um, and all spaces allow for public data and for private encrypted data. Uh, then we have a feature called threads, which is basically allows messaging between users. So you can uh, imagine using it for comments or some chat box or something like that. Um, and that's basically the, the three main features of the three box JS library. Uh, so how, how does all, all of this work? So we use uh, JS IPFS, both in the three box JS library and in the pinning node. And basically, for data storage and content addressing, and also PubSub to uh, kind of tell the network of updates uh, that happens. Then we use a really cool system called OrbitDB, uh, which is a database layer built on top of IPFS. I'm sure many of you might be familiar with this project. Um, it's basically a CRDT data structure on top of IPFS, which um, updates and 
replicates databases between peers that are actively listening for those databases. And then we are using a DAD and we have a DAD method and that's a cryptographic identifier for users. So uh, basically giving each user a unique identifier in the network. Um, so kind of touch upon this, but uh, basically we have DAP that would use the three box JS library. This DAP uh, would live in the browser and you have the JS IPFS that connects the orbit DB and you have the DAD and all of this creates your three box, which where you can store data. Uh, then we communicate with PubSub to the pinning node where um, the pinning node would open the orbit DB uh, instances for the um, users that are like active live on the network. Um, so, so the pinning node doesn't need to listen to all orbit DB da databases of all users at all time. It only opens the databases for uh, the users that are currently like live using three locks. Um, and this also provides a REST API for like, we, we kind of see it as like a caching layer for uh, profiles. So you don't have to like fetch the entire CRDT object and like reduce it down to whatever uh, the state of the profile is right now. You can just query the REST API for, um, for the state of the profile, uh, which is useful if, if you're just like displaying um, something and you just want to display profile, a lot of profiles for different users in the app. Um, uh, and since we're coming from this Ethereum space, the kind of first application Freebox is used for is to replace hex addresses of Ethereum applications with a picture and a name. Uh, so as we kind of bootstrapped this network, we have a, uh, something we call the address server. And this is basically a mapping from an Ethereum address to a three box DID. Um, and this is a component that we have centralized right now, but we're going to uh, fold that in into the pinning node. And then you, we are gonna do um, lookup of an Ethereum address to a three box DID with PubSub, similar to the IPNS pub sub um, that recently I think got into uh, IPFS. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about things that are interesting for us in terms of research and things that we would like to see maybe collaborate on. So data schemas we see as really important, like how do we store data in a way where it's interoperable? There is a website called schema.org, but it's primarily focused on uh, JSON LD. So it would be cool also if there was like IPLD based schemas. I haven't seen very much efforts around that. So if you know something about that, that would be very interesting. Uh, and then IPLD and JSON LD compatibility. Um, I know there's some work on that, but like that area, I think needs a bunch of exploration. Um, and then of course, uh, linked data signatures. So right now, OrbitDB has uh, a system where it kind of takes the data in, in an, uh, an IPFS object, uh, adds a signature based on that data um, in its own custom way. There is a working group, I think, that works with like these linked data signatures. Um, I don't think, I think they might become interoperable with both JSON-LD and IPLD. And that would be super cool. So we could have like a way of uh, signing data objects um, in a, in a like standard way. And I think this, this uh, standard would also likely support DADs, but I think there's still some open questions there. Um, so yeah, this was like a quick overview of 3Box and um, 
would love to hear some questions so I can dive deeper into the tech if anyone's got, anyone wants that. Um, yeah, thanks. Awesome, thank you very much. Can you stop sharing your screen? Awesome, excellent, thank you. So this is a Q&A portion, so if anyone has any questions, if they can put it in a chat, that would be much appreciated. So do you have any questions about three box? Awesome. Um, this one's from Alan Shaw. He says, is three box in production right now or is it still in development? So we see ourselves as in production. Obviously we're using like very new technologies. So things uh, might be uh, shaky at times. Um, but yeah, we see ourselves as in production and we are used by some Ethereum applications and we are actually in the process of integrating with a bunch of other Ethereum based applications. Um, so for example, DAO stack is very interested in using our threads for creating a commenting system for their kind of uh, DAO. So you can like comment on proposals and interact with other members of a DAO. Um, and yeah, some other DAOs are also looking at using it. And there's a bunch of other projects uh, looking at it as well. Um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. And this is a comment from Volker. Um, there's schema work going on in IPLD team, so there's a link on um, the kind of work the IPLD team is um, doing, so that's a good reference. And awesome. Alan, what are your biggest pain points using JS IPFS right now? Hmm. So actually, Using JS IPFS has been like a good experience. I know a lot of people like that I've talked to about using IPFS have like had it be its somewhat painful experience, but like our experience has been mostly good. Um, hmm. So, so one thing that's like a combination of IPFS and RBTB is like as IPFS releases like a new version, it takes a while for Orbit to like um, update some of the things that is like new in the new version. And we have to kind of wait until with updating the IPFS dependency before they have updated their software. Um, PubSub works fairly well. Uh, but I would like to explore more like um, making it uh, easier to understand like when I can send a message and know that it will be uh, received by another peer, like a specific peer. So like right now when I connect to the PubSub network, um, I kind of wait with sending my message before I've actually been connected to a node uh, like to, to, to a pinning node. So I kind of wait for that and then send the message. Uh, but I know that that node is already on the network. So, but if I send the message before, it might not, before I've seen that node join, or like I, I guess connect, I'm connected to that node, that might not reach that node. Does that make sense? Are there any other questions or comments? Johnny's got a question. Okay. Yeah, what specific oh. um, did method do you, are you using? So, so right now we're using a method called uh, Muport. Um, so, so basically the three box project uh, spun out of another project that was called uh, Uport. And we yeah. were kind of in Uport experimenting with some uh, DAD methods and and this one is called Muport, so M-U port. And basically it's a, we create a bunch of keys, add them to a, an IPFS object, and then take the hash of that IPFS object to be the identifier. Uh, we are actually uh, planning on creating uh, another DAD method uh, that's very similar to 
uh, to Muport, but it has some additional features uh, that's useful for uh, our spaces features. So basically, uh, what we've been thinking is if, if um, a, a, an application requests access to a specific space, and you want to send messages to different user, between different users in the space, uh, you don't want to encrypt the message such that other dApps that doesn't have access to that space can decrypt them. So we kind of have this two-layer DAD system approach where um, we have a DAD for each space, but that DAD also reference like a root DAD. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that's a bit of like a lot of information and maybe not super clear, uh, but that's our plan. So I wrote the uh, the IP ID did method, um, which is based on IP LD, and so I ran into the issue about the JSON LD and the linked data signatures. So you can serialize um, JSON LD on top of IP LD, but it's not backwards compatible. And so for back backwards compatibility, you need a fully qualified URI. An IPFS and I well I think there is now IPFS colon, but now it's it's registering IPLD colon as being a scheme name under IANA, which is in the works. And so the issue we have right now is with interoperability with either the Uport um, uh, or Muport um, is that's in JWT, and so it's converting it into JSON LD and then interoperating between IPLD, which is what our did method is based on. Okay, uh, yeah, the, there's a lot of like subtleties in this. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think I saw you were part of writing a paper on um, IPFS based DAD methods al along with the uh, Christian Lundquist, I, I think. Is that right? Yeah, so that, that kind of touched upon some of those things you mentioned, right? Yeah, exactly. You're muted, Portia. Thank you. Our next comment is from Volker. Um, to kind of relate it to IPLD, there's the weekly meeting, which is actually today for the IPLD team that is open for everyone. So if you want to learn more about IPLD, they do have an open meeting as well. And there's a link where you could find more information about it. Thank you, Volker. Any other, are there any other questions or comments? Alrighty. Well, that will include, well, that will co conclude our meeting. Oh, yay, we will say thank you. <laughs> that will conclude our meeting for today of the IPFS weekly call. Um, I'd like to, one, thank Jacob for taking notes. And thank Joel for coming and speaking about 3Box. Thank you very much. No, yeah, thank you. Yeah. And uh, I'll see everyone next week on Monday. Have a great week and um, see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.